Okay, I am continuing my Atwood machine series in which I try to do as many different problems involving the Atwood machine. So let me just show you where we've gone so far. So this is the classic Atwood machine where you have two masses hanging over a pulley and they're different masses. You find the acceleration and the tension. This is a half Atwood machine. So this has one of the blocks on a frictionless table and then there's a pulley with another block hanging over it. And then I did a, I called this an inclined half Atwood machine. I don't know if it actually has a name, but that's what I call it. You can call it whatever you want, but it's the same thing as this, except it's not a flat plane, it's inclined. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this one right here. And I want to you do the same problem, but now I want to find the final speed if I release it from rest. Okay, so, and I'm going to do it a little bit different way. So, suppose I have the same mass as I've been using. This is 50 grams and 100 grams frictionless table and it starts from rust. I release it from rust. I want to find out how fast it's going after it falls 0.4 meters. I just made up those numbers. Okay. So previously I had an expression for the acceleration. Um, what was that acceleration? I can look it up. I think it was, that's, that's there. There it is. A is M1 G over M1 plus M2. I derived that in a previous video, and you can link to that down below if I remember to put that there. So if I know the acceleration and the distance, I technically could use the kinematic equations, but I'm going to do this completely differently. I'm going to use the work energy principle. So the work is the change in energy. And my system, uh, let's see, what should I pick as my system? I'm going to pick the two blocks. plus the string as my system. Okay, so that means all of this is my system that I'm thinking about the energy. So the first thing I need to think of is what forces do work on this system? What forces are acting on the system? The tension isn't acting on the system, it's an internal force. So there's no work done by tension. Okay, uh, so other than that, I only have two forces acting on the whole system. I have uh, the normal force pushing up right here and then I have uh, the gravitational force right there m2g and the gravitational force right there m2g m1g now only one of these three forces does work on the system so we define work as in uh, you could do it as f dot delta r equals f delta r cosine theta. So F is the force, delta R is the displacement, and theta is the angle between those two. So in this case, mass 2 is moving this way. So what work does the normal force do? The, and mass 2 does use, move 0.4 meters, right? Because the string uh, is connected to the two masses, and they can't, uh, if it's not stretchable, then it has to move the same as this one. But in this case, if it's moving this way, if delta R for mass 2 is that way, the angle between N and delta R is 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is 0. And the same thing is true for the gravitational force on M2. Uh, the gravitational force is down. It's moving this way. The angle is 90 degrees. So these two do 0 work. That means I'm just left with this. So the work is going to be equal to the force, M1g, times the displacement. How far does it move? I'm going to say this distance is h, and so I'll just write it like that. So I'm going to say the work done on the system is positive because it's increasing the energy of the system. Okay. Now, what about the energy? Well, if I have this as my system, there's only really one kind of energy. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. Having a spring connecting these two would be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? I'll remember to do that for a later problem. Uh, so the type of energy for the system is just going to be kinetic. But there's two masses, so both masses can move. So I can write this. The work done is M1GH, and that's the final kinetic energy, E2, which is going to be 1 half M1V2 squared minus 1 half M2V1 V1, 2, 1, 2, 2. Yeah. So this is the velocity of 1 at the end. That's the 1, 2. I just made that up right now. Uh, that's the, wait, I was thrown off by, this is, should be 1, 1, okay. It's going to be 1 half, the initial, the final kinetic energy is 1 half 
m1 v1 2 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 2 squared minus the initial kinetic energy. They know both start from rest, so that'll be zero. Okay. And now, if these two are connected by a string that doesn't stretch, this velocity has to be equal to that velocity, and I'll just call it v2 for the final. So I get m1gh equals 1 half m1 plus m2 v2 squared. And I want to solve this for v2. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by m1 plus m2, and take the square root, and I get v2 equals the square root of 2 m1gh over m1 plus m2. Okay, let's just double check here the units. Um, okay, so the uh, I have mass cancels here. This g is in newtons per kilogram, which is equivalent to meters per second squared. So this would be meters per second squared times meters gives meters squared per second squared. I take the square root and I get meters per second, which is a velocity. That's good. Um, yeah, so let's just plug in my values here. Um, I have all everything I need to know, so I'm going to turn my calculator. Uh, I put in 2. Mass 1 was 0.1 times. G is 9.8 times. Uh, h is 0.4 times, and then I divide by the sum of the mass, 0.15 divided by, and then I take the square root. And I get 2.28. Okay, now let me just say, since we're talking about this particular problem, what if I had picked a different system? What if I had picked the system is uh, the blocks plus the string plus the earth, in that case, these gravitational forces wouldn't do any work because they're part of the system. So instead, my I'd have no work done because the normal force still does no work. But now I'd have zero is the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy, where gravitational potential energy is m1 g y, right? Because this one doesn't change potential, doesn't change height. So if this one starts here at y equals 0 and ends at y equals negative h, then delta u is going to be the final potential of negative h, which is going to be m1, negative m1 g h, and then it's going to be minus 0 up there. And then when I put that in over here, I'm going to get 0 equals the final kinetic energy, 1 half m1 plus m2 v2 squared minus m1 g h. And you see right here, this is the same as this equation. Because if I add m1gh to both sides, I get this. So you do it, you get the same answer, okay? You can do it either way. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter in this case. I picked this as a system just because I felt like it. Uh, often you want to put gravity as part of this, the Earth as part of the system, but the important thing is you can't have a change in potential and work done by gravity. You can do only do one or the other. Okay, so there's the half Atwood machine. Um, I'll do another Atwood machine problem in the next video. And I have a whole bunch left. Okay, so don't worry like, hey, he's going to run out of problems. No, I'm only getting started here. It's going to be great.